this book belongs to me. Hello, journal. Is it okay if I call you that? It's a bit formal, I know. But we've only just met. Let me introduce myself. I'm Isabel Barbara Cook. Most people call me Izzy, not Dad. He calls me Titch. He's such a numpty head. My little brother Ben calls me Isbo. I call him he who chews curtains. He likes red for breakfast and blue for dinner. And then there's... Mom, my top tea drinking buddy. my tea and this is Pinky. I think she's jealous of you, Journal. Today's my birthday. Dad made his best cake. Mum and Gran started the singing. Ben gurgled along. I blew out the candles. And made a wish. I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. This is where you come in, journal. A writer writes. No one ever got anything just by wanting it. I guess that birthday wish was a waste then. Bran said writing is about exploring your thoughts. It helps you unlock your feelings.
I'd like to write something that will make Gran smile. She always talks about little acorns growing into big trees. Is that to make me feel better about my height? Or about my writing? I want to write a story, but what kind? A romance? Science fiction? A comedy? A drama? Fairy tales? Wait, we're getting somewhere. A fantasy story. start my fantasy story once upon a time Ugh. no one said this would be easy again from the top not so far away in the land of Astoria a place of peace and magic There lived a girl named... Robin! Everyone knew her by the bright color. Of her purple dress, she was ready to begin her adventure. In fact, she'd been preparing for it her whole life, for she was the only apprentice of the village guardian, Elder Ava. Everyone was very fond of Robin. Her heart was full of curiosity and compassion. The villagers agreed that no one was... ...as kind as her. Too far away in the land of Astoria. There lived a young girl named Robin. She was kind and loved taking care of the world around her. Suddenly, a faint speck of light floated down and began to buzz around Robin. Hello, little firefly. Did you come for my birthday? Oh, Elder Ava's gonna be so happy! Let's head back to the village. The firefly shared Robin's excitement. I was also planning to make Elder Ava a fruit punch in secret. Maybe we can find some more berries on the way back, Firefly. That's a juicy one. Good job, Firefly. Perfect. Come on, Firefly. 
The village is just a bit further down. Whoa! I love doing that. The bridge was an old, creaky affair. Careful, Robin. Careful. Robin imagined shark fins circling below. Phew! We made it, Firefly. And... Down! Robin knew many secret paths back to the village. Like this one. She loved feeling the roots around her, as if the tree was giving her a gentle hug. Nearly there, Firefly. Just one more little slide. Here we go! Above, Robin couldn't wait to give Elder Ava a hug. She'd be so proud that her firefly came. Look, firefly. Happy birthday, Robin. I've made a new friend. One of our sacred fireflies. This... Does this mean... Yes, it is time. Would you fetch me that box, please? Ava was sure that Robin would rise to the occasion. Go ahead, open it. This will store all the magic words you find. Some will stay with you, others are fleeting. They will help you overcome any obstacle. Now, your training is complete. Congratulations, new guardian of the fireflies. Guardian? But that's you. Guardian in retirement now. You should head to the Shrine Tree for the other Firefly's blessing. I'll join you shortly, dear. forget a little something of mine to mark the occasion. Elsa Ava reached inside her pocket and handed Robin a gift. Ava's favorite pendant, set with a giant emerald. Now off you go. my magic book and all at once robin was surrounded by the hustle and bustle of village life Power. 
she must have the book. Robin must be the new Firefly Guardian. That was amazing. The best thing I've seen all morning. Why do we have to be on Robin the loved throwing to stones the over the rooftops. Back here from just looking at but it. not today. Look, Robin has the book. <gasps> ah, missed. Today, the Firefly Shrine was waiting. She looked over her bustling treetop village. I heard you had a bit of leaf mold. This was all she knew. Yeah, Elder Bassus gave me a poultice. Did it work? Cleared it right And up. it was home. Looks better than ever. Smell that. That's the scent of paradise. I can always use more paradise. But inside, she was still curious. Hey, Robin! Happy birthday! No, you can't have a magic book. Good to see you, Robin. But Robin has one. But that's different. She's special. But you say I'm special. Careful, careful. No need to rush. About the world that lay beyond. That book for a while, Robin. You have to see the fireflies. Let me get the gate. Ah, blast! into adventure. Perfect. Robin crawled through the dank, dark tunnel. It didn't feel like being hugged at all. Bell to announce her arrival.
At last, the tree was in sight. Home to the fireflies, whose ancient energy kept the village safe from harm. Go on. Show them what you can do. Use your word magic to get to the fireflies. That's it. They're accepting their new guardian. At last, I can get a lion. Glowing light surrounded her. A timeless energy. The birth stars. And forged suns. Now she was part of it. Forever. And so Robin became the new Firefly Guardian. But her biggest adventure was yet to come. Hello, Journal. This time of the year, it gets dark so early. Like the day is just an accident, and the night is how the world really works. Stars and fireflies glowing in the dark. I've never actually seen a firefly. Do you think that matters, Journal? Glowing things are cool, especially in nature. On holiday in Wales, Gran and I would go to the beach and look up at the stars. But one night, we looked down instead. The stars were shining in the water. It was like the sky got flipped upside down. We took off our shoes and socks and waded into the water. As we walked over the pebbles, beneath our toes. Gran said it was called bioluminescence. Tiny plankton in the water being moved back and forth by the tide. I knew it was just little creatures, but it felt like magic. I got up very early the next morning. I sneaked into the kitchen, got a jam jar, and went down to the shore to where I'd seen the plankton.
evening, I was so excited. I carefully put the jar on my bedside table. And waited for the night. But it didn't glow. I was devastated. I showed Gran the jar. She laughed. Gran always says. You can't put a cork in nature. They need sunlight and nutrients from the tide. Gran knows about those things. She used to be a marine biologist. Gran bought some special algae that would grow at home. We spent the whole day planning it. Pebbles. Glass stones. for Gran's photo album. For our future selves to remember. How the tank took ages to fill. How we took turns stirring the algae in. How happy we were when we had it all set. Just needs time to develop, said Gran. After six days, the algae was ready. I put the tank on my desk and ran my finger through the water. My own bit of magic. That was Mum. She just got a call. She has to leave now. It sounded really bad. I have a weird feeling in my stomach. Something I don't know how to deal with. We just heard that Gran has had a stroke. I don't want to believe it. I can't lose her. Robin woke from a hazy, distant dream. Something unnatural had stirred her from slumber. What's that noise? Elder Ava? Robin, 
A giant creature is attacking our village. Attacking? I thought the fireflies protected us. There must be something wrong. Get to the tree at once. Hurry! What creature could have caused this? And suddenly, Robin was surrounded by smoke and cinders. As she hurried past the crackling rooftops, her concern grew. Hey, Robin, you gotta hide. You can hide with us. Broken. The lift. No, there's no space. She looked at her burning treetop village. This was all she knew. This was home. She needed to get to the fireflies. She needed to keep everyone safe. Trapped under this thing. Oh, thank you, thank you. Never thought I'd be so glad to see my feet again. No, no, no. I need to get to the firefly tree. The bridge was beyond repair. was beyond repair. from beyond the village gates. Robin rushed out to meet it. Soon she would prove herself as the new village guardian. I can do this. Right, Firefly? Right? But she could not deny the creeping Terror. The earth yawned below her. The earth yawned below her. This tree did not comfort her. It was as scared as she was. With nobody around to extinguish them, fires burned out of control. Stay with you. Others are fleeting. A strange blaze crackled ahead. Is that fire? I've never seen a flame like that before.
sacred bell lay silent on the ground. Please be here, please be here. Soon, the dreadful realization dawned on Robin. The fireflies were gone. A new determination rose in her. She would find. Eldereva! I know. Our people will fall sick without them. Don't give up hope. I'll get the fireflies back. Go, and may the love of this village guide you. Always. Robin took a deep breath. She knew what she had to do. She was the guardian. She would bring the fireflies back home. The earth could fall away beneath her. But she would not. He stopped. This was further than she'd ever been before. And yet it was... exhilarating. Wondrous. And terrifying. Fear was at her side. And hope in her heart. But things were about to get worse. Much, much worse. Is that a dragon? It's big. But Robin would not slow down. Not for crumbling paths. Not for giant monsters. She would make it answer to her. No matter what. She would catch the dragon. No, wait! She raced forward. And leapt. Hello, Janel. We went to see Gran today. In the hospital. 
it looks like a big grey fortress. It took us a while to find the right room. Dad let me open the door. bed at home. Nothing like the hospital one she was in. Lying in there, she looked so small. I don't remember her being that small. Gran's eyes were open, but she struggled to... Properly. The doctor said it was called dysphasia. It was caused by the stroke. She's usually so talkative, but now she kept stopping. Mid sentence, as if all the words she could find were just out of reach. I could see it really frustrating her. And then Gran started coughing. They put an oxygen mask on her. I told her she looked like Darth Gran. Reminds me of Gran telling me how she took Mum to the cinema. A long, long time ago, when Mum was my age. A grand story! Gran and Mum went to see my favourite movie. Mum fell asleep. But Gran fell in love with it. When I was little, Gran would show it to me. On a battered video cassette, Gran would laugh at the robots and guess a funny smile. Whenever the scruffy looking smuggler showed up, we'd watch it until we could quote all the best lines. We laughed a lot. Once she gets out, we're gonna watch them all over again. And when the next movie arrives, Gran and I are going to go to the cinema. Together. Gran and I will be playing games again. I can't wait! This 
time, I'll be all her high scores. For sure. Gran's a tough cookie. In video games, and everywhere else. I heard mom crying in her room. I've never seen her cry before. She looked so sad. I didn't know what to do. So I made her a cup of tea. like grands, she said. Mum said Gran was getting tired. I said she's getting better. Mum said she felt helpless. I said she was just sleepy. Mum said Gran's going to... I said she's going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. Grand still be grand after this? But she looked so ill. Gran is going to get better, right? I made her smile. That should help. Got to keep positive. Mum needs me to. I'll show Gran my story. Mum as well. They'll enjoy reading it. I hope it helps. What else can I do? I just need to finish my story. So, where were we? After the dragon attacked the village, Robin set out to find the fireflies, leaving Elder Ava and her village behind. Her journey took her to... a vast desert. With a guardian. Who guards it because it is... sacred. Robin had pursued the dragon far, far from home. <laughs> 